today we're going to follow up on um, the whole concept of ethics in public speaking. In my last tape, I talked a little bit about First Amendment rights, and I talked about Aristotle's thoughts about ethos. Now I'm going to con uh, connect those thoughts with thoughts about fallacies that exist in our society, and then go into some of the philosophies that exist in our society that impact how messages are structured and how the messages are received. And so let's go on into that. There are six common moral fallacies that exist in our society now. This is, this is by no means an exhaustive list. The list can go far beyond this, but six common fallacies uh, that, um, that we're going to start with. The first one that's out there that oftentimes will promote uh, a less than ethical approach to things is let the buyer beware. There are those that believe that as long as a person is willing to buy it, I have a right to promote it or sell it, as it were. Uh, another one is everyone is doing it. So if there's strength in numbers, and so the person's assuming that that strength then provides a validation or an, an ethos, as it were, to what is being done. The third one is the only crime is getting caught. So if you don't catch me, then I, it's as if I have done nothing unethical. The next one is if I didn't do it, someone else would. And that one speaks for itself. Still from the rich and no one gets hurt, and my favorite, you can't fight City Hall. So let's go on through the, the, through the remaining three. If I didn't do it, someone else would. People believe that just because there's something that, uh, that's a vulnerability that uh, has been uh, utilized or, or, or seized upon by others, that, that that gives them a right to seize upon it. Even if it's unethical and it's wrong, stealing from the rich and no one gets hurt. There's a fallacious belief out there that the rich have an endless supply of whatever and that because of that endless supply, I have a right to take from them even if I haven't earned it. And then the last one is you can't fight City Hall. There's a belief, fallacious belief out there that if a person is in authority, that their authority is absolute, and there's nothing I can do to fight against that authority, even if it's being used in an unethical manner. Now, what's the problem with these fallacies? Fallacies are bad because they are shallow and they're erroneous. And um, don't be surprised, however, if you find these fallacies exist within you, because they do in most people. And at, in, uh, when a person is faced with the absence of sound reasoning and logic, oftentimes they will grab a hold of whatever is that they can think of in the moment to push forward their cause. And a lot of fallacies spring forth out of that. If you can't justify through sound reasoning and logic your stance concerning a certain issue, it's probably time to either go back and do the homework to justify your point or to abandon that mindset. For instance, <clears throat> there was a situation where I was on a phone list. I was on a phone team. Uh, uh, what is that? What do we call that? Um, telemarketing. And we called anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. And they gave us a list of folks we had to contact but the phone lines were open. And I hadn't spoken with a good friend of mine who lived in California for years, and I wanted to speak with her. The temptation was there. They seemed rich. They, it had, they had an endless supply of phone lines. And, um, I, and, and so there was, of course, one, one entity on my shoulder saying, go ahead and give her a call. It won't matter. They won't know. And the other entity was saying, that's not what these people hired you to do. They're paying for this, and you need, you need to do a job. I am very thankful that I listened to the second voice because they pulled an audit that night. And I and, and half when we came back the next night, 50% of the people weren't there. What do you think happened to them? Yep, they gave in to the first voice. And I would have lost an, uh, an entire graduate assistantship. 
based on one phone call. See, fallacies will do that to you. Because they don't have sound reasoning or logic behind them, a lot of times if you let them govern your thoughts and how you uh, shape those thoughts for public presentation work or in any form of human communication, they will abandon you in time of need and leave you with no, no solid uh, recourse and no solid foundation to stand on. So do not buy into fallacies. Take the time to do your homework. Now, there are also situations where people approach a particular issue based on a school of thought that they are motivated by. We're going to look at two of these. The first one is categorical imperatives as put forth by Immanuel Kant. And Immanuel Kant believed that principles that we have within us are constant and that we sh once they are established that we should stick to them and show a loyalty towards them regardless of the circumstances or the changes in our society. So he's, you know, uh, one of the things that we were taught when I grew up uh, by my father, may he rest in peace, is that we don't steal. He said, this is our family, we don't steal. We buy what we need. And I remember my brother going to the store and stealing a bag of potato chips and getting a, a boiling from my father, and I knew all the more that he meant that. And so that's a timeless truth. And so I operate based on that. My daughter cracks up at me as I'm running back into the grocery store with the one can of corn that we forgot to get rang up, you know, because we didn't pay for it. You see, what am I doing? That's a timeless truth. I'm going to take that can of corn in, whether it's cold, raining, I don't, it doesn't matter to me. It goes back in because that's a timeless principle. What timeless principles exist in your world? If you have a solid reasoning for them, then you're probably operating under this philosophy. And it's justifiable. The second theory that we're going to look at is utilitarianism. This was put forth by John Stuart Mills, who said actions should be judged in terms of the good that results versus the harm that is done. And so he said his philosophy was this. If the good outweighs the bad, then it's ethical. Okay. So, uh, and, and, and both, of those, both of these theories have strengths and weaknesses, okay? And for instance, I know folks who've operated based on a categorical, imper categorical imperative, and it cost the life of someone who did not have the power to, to choose otherwise. So maybe parents had children, and they, because of a certain belief, they wouldn't allow the child to receive certain medical attention. And so the child did not get the medical attention, and the child lost their life because of it. Um, there, you know, I don't know, I, I think get a little mucky sometimes when you talk about these philosophies. Well, in John Stuart Mill's case with utilitarianism, the weakness is that oftentimes the rights of the minority get trampled upon. So these, this type of philosophy has been used to justify things like slavery and child labor laws, you know, or child labor, okay? Because they'll say, well, it's better to have them work in a factory than to have them out on the street cold with nothing to eat. But if they're in that factory and they're developing tendinitis because the equipment isn't designed for them, or they're cold and uh, they, they are not that cold and hungry, but they, uh, some, uh, one of them gets killed because the, the factory is dangerous, have we really behaved ethically? The important thing is to understand that these values run deep. And so I, there are some discussion questions that you're going to be given and some instructions. And what I want, what I want to do is put before you some thoughts, uh, you know, like some proposals, as it were. Uh, a person, uh, one of them starts out. A person wants to talk about how to break into the college computer and change grades. Is this wonderful? If so, why? If not, why not? And uh, I, I want you all to get into groups and to discuss these things. Now we'll probably do this when we get back to class, but think about these philosophies and review them so that when we engage in this discussion, you can recall them easier and we can move into our discussion phase more efficiently. Thank you.